Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Stoked on Spokes. In today's video, I'm gonna show you what I take on every winter commute in my bag or on me. These are things that I put in my bag. I'm not saying you have to put in your bag, but yeah, hopefully they'll help you. I will also say that I am currently living in Colorado Springs, Colorado, so the weather isn't horrible. It's not like Wisconsin cold like when I lived in Wisconsin, so it's doable and these clothes and items work for me they might not work for you if you're in a colder climate so just take that as you will okay so everything i'm going to talk about is clothes specific I'm not going to talk about bike specific stuff in this video but i do have to carry it somehow and that is in a backpack and the backpack of choice lately for me has been the chrome bravo 3.0 this is the Chrome Bravo 3.0. It is a sweet, sweet backpack. I mean, I've been wearing it for a year, year and a half. But yeah, I, I keep on trying different backpacks and end up going back to this one because it has the right amount of capacity that I need. And it also has the right amount of organization that I need. So Bravo 3.0, pretty sweet. Okay, we're going to cover the clothes from head to toe. This is everything I bring on a commute. Now, some of these things you might not see me wearing, but it is in my backpack. Yeah, my backpack is a little heavier, but I'd rather sacrifice a little bit more weight and be comfortable if the weather changes, especially after an eight hour day of work. It's just one of those things that I'm okay with. Starting at the top, I have the Velocio winter cap. Pretty much always wear this on winter commutes. I don't think there's a commute unless it gets up above 40, uh, 45 that I won't wear this. And that's kind of rare in the winter. Obviously in the summer, I never wear this, but Velocio winter cap. I made a video on this cap and the Velocio alpha gloves. If you want to check it out, because those two items are items that I really, really enjoy for winter commuting. Below that on my neck, I have a buff. Now this isn't a winter buff at all. It's just a traditional buff light, pretty breathable. So, but it does keep you warm if you need a little bit more warmth on your neck. Now, if it's too cold and I need more warmth than the buff, I will wear this balaclava. And this is like a fishing balaclava, ice fishing, I should say, that I got in Wisconsin. I got this at Walmart for 10 bucks, I think. It's an ice, ice armor clam, that's what it's called. But yeah, definitely worth the 10 bucks. It's fleece and yeah, it keeps you warm. The thing I like about it is that I can put it over the winter cap, but still under my helmet, so it's it's nice and thin to be worn under a helmet. Okay, moving on to the jackets. Now, I do just commute in a regular t-shirt, cotton t-shirt. I know that's probably a bad choice, but I don't really own wool t-shirts uh, or merino wool t-shirts. So I just commute in a t-shirt, and it gets a little bit wet, but it, it works, you know. Uh, on top of the t-shirt though, I do wear a Patagonia R1 Air. I mean, this has been my favorite coat since I got it probably two years ago before Canyon was born. It's uh, extremely breathable, but it's a perfect layering coat. And it has a super thin hood. So if I don't wanna bust out the Ice Armor Clam, I will just put the hood up and put it over my Velocio cap and I'm still able to wear my helmet over both. So super nice. Um, I've really liked this for more than cycling, uh, just running anything. And it's not even cycling specific. It just happens to be a great buy. This is one of those items that if I lost or it got stolen somewhere, I would be replacing this as soon as I could. It's that meaningful to me. On top of that, I wear a Velocio ultralight jacket. Now this is a spendier option. You can just get any ultralight or very light windbreaker. And all that's doing is just making sure that the warmth from the Patagonia R1 Air is still there. So it's not actually, because if I just wore the Patagonia R1 Air, all the wind, I would be able to feel it all the wind because it's very, very breathable. It's meant for mountaineering and sport. So you need a little bit of a trap to close that heat in. And that's why I wear something like this. Before I had this cycling specific jacket, 
I would wear a marmot jacket, which I just got at Sierra Trading Post for like 20 bucks. So if you don't want cycling specific stuff, just find something that works. Make sure that it's uh, windproof. Now, if both of those options aren't warm enough, I will throw on my down jacket. Now, this is an Eddie Bauer thin down. And yeah, yeah, I got this four years ago. Before I got a down jacket, I would be the person that would wear a hoodie with a rain jacket over it. And that was like my winter coat. And I just thought, why do, why do people even own down? And I always wondered that until I actually bought down. And yeah, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's why you guys have these jackets. Uh, if you've never worn down, definitely give it a shot. It's amazing. Packs down super small and relatively light for the amount of warmth that it gives you. And I know Eddie Bauer is a pricey brand, but uh, pro tip, just wait for a sale. I got this 50% off four years ago, so it's definitely seen. It's Battle Scars has more than one patch across it because of campfires and things like that. Okay, for my hands, I wear two types of gloves. Uh, one is a thin glove. This is like a North Face glove. I also have the Velocio Alpha gloves. And yeah, so you'll either see me wearing these or the orange Velocio gloves if I'm if it's warmer. If it's colder, and my, my fingers are like the first thing to go, so I need thick gloves when it's colder. These are Carhartt gloves that I got in Wisconsin. They were like 16 bucks, and they're definitely worth it. Yeah, you can't feel you know, the breaking or the shifting as well. But if you can't feel your hands, then, you know, you won't be able to feel that either. So I think it's definitely worth wearing thicker gloves and just having your hands be warm. For pants, I have nothing special. These are just Levi's chinos and I wear any sort of variation of Levi's pants because that's what I just wear to work. So I literally commute in my work pants to work and then when I get there, I just wear them all day. I do change shirts because the t-shirt is sweaty and nasty. So I'll put on like an Under Armour polo or something like that to work in. But uh, pants, it's just this. I think something that helps with not having to wear leggings or under long underwear or something like that under pants is good pair of socks, good pair of shoes, to keep your feet warm. Then it doesn't feel like the cold is just rising through your legs. Speaking of feet, these socks I always go for when it's cold, and I know it's going to be cold, are these Kane 11. Kane 11 was a sock brand that just closed down shop. Rest in peace, Kane 11. Uh, my buddy Steve worked for him, and Steve hooked it up with a bunch of these Kane 11 socks. They are size specific, so I wear a size 10 shoe, have a size 10 foot. These are size 10 and they have a nice merino cotton, I believe, blend. So a little warmer than my traditional socks like cotton socks and definitely help with moisture control. So for shoes, I think it's pretty fundamental that you get a pair of shoes to commute in that are warm and not very, very breathable. That sounds ridiculous, but just warmer than your traditional cycling shoe. For example, when I'm going on gravel rides or summer rides, whatever it may be, I wear these. These are just Giro shoes that if I wore these on my commute, my toes would freeze instantly. But I wear, you guys have seen them in all my videos, these Perlazumi Alp X. One, they have the boa, so it's super easy to take them on and off when I get to work, take them off, put them back on, take them off at home. And two, I feel like they're just a better shoe for the cold. They keep the heat in a little better, um, aren't as breathable as something like those Giros. And yeah, I think they work. On top of that, they have a quality, quality sole if you, you know, want to walk around and it's icy or what have you. Definitely recommend a good pair of shoes for commuting. One last thing I forgot to mention is some shades or eye protection of some sort. That cold weather just hitting your eyes is brutal, so you probably won't see me winter commuting without 
some sort of glasses unless I totally spaced it and forgot them. All right, I think that is it. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video or if you have other things that you take with you on your winter commutes that you would like me to try in my bag or just you know general advice for the people watching this video. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you are having a happy holiday and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, remember to stay stoked on Spokes.